Hi. In this video, I want to talk about the auto levels and color uh, box that comes up inside the quick edit mode. I'm going to uh, load an image here that is a little more yellow than most. It's obviously off. I mean, clearly this should be white and your skin should be, you know, uh, definitely not yellow. Um, but, you know, a lot of images you don't really see that right away. What happens is you can go into the auto levels and color and it will show you all of a sudden a cast will be removed. Uh, some sort of color cast, whether it's blue or yellow or, or whatever, and that you didn't really see. Um, so if I click that, for example, you can see that all of a sudden it's much better. This is much whiter and her skin is much better. Um, you can see that there's quite a few controls in here. Um, it sets the control auto color, which is the best for most images. Um, all of these controls are based on traditional color balancing methods. There's, there's so many ways to analyze your picture and to balance your picture. But what I've done is I've kind of conglomerated them into one box where, you know, following the sage light method of just really being able to experiment, you can just um, click buttons and decide um, what looks better. In this case, I think the uh, default settings look better. But to explain these a little more thoroughly, that what happens is you have auto levels and then you also have auto color. Auto levels, all it does is it, uh, in, in your histogram, all it does is it, uh, if I kind of exaggerate the range with the low tones, you can see all it does is adjust your high tones and your low tones um, very uh, linearly. It, you can see that the histogram, as it moves around, the, all the colors pretty much stay in the same place. The clipping, uh, you see them move around a little bit because the clipping is based on percentage. I'll discuss that in a moment. But when I do the auto color, what it does is it bases these movements on what it thinks is the most neutral color for the image. And so often that, that works out for the best. Um, so you can see these, these colors moving around a little bit more because it's constantly analyzing your picture and trying to get the most neutral color in the top and bottom. It's also looking at the middle of your picture and trying to analyze that, uh, trying to find the most neutral point for that area too, and sets it accordingly. You can see there's quite a difference between, even if I just go to the uh, default values, you can see there's quite a bit of difference where it's adjusted the picture. It's, it's seen that it, the, the blue channel is too low and, and adjusted it. Um, so what you can do is you can um, select warmer, Midtones. Sometimes that's better for um, skin tones. You can see it makes it a little redder here. It's not in this case. Normalized black point. What it does is it analyzes the picture. Sometimes this will appear, and sometimes it won't. It analyzes the picture, and if it sees a gap in the um, histogram, it'll allow you to bring yank the black point down, which will sometimes um, be better for pictures. With that, the default setting is to not have it set and it will um, adjust your picture and sometimes make it brighter, which really works out better here. So it's just a, um, it, like, it, like other things in Lightbox, it's experimental. You can always press the help and it will tell you what's going on. And so for this picture, it's pretty much the best option. I'll show another example in a second. So I'm going to accept that. What it does at the end is it, see how it changed the color value here? It, uh, has set what it thinks is the most neutral image color for the image and what will happen sometimes is it will help balance the picture so you can see that it's uh, helping me balance this picture out uh, even even a little bit more by adding a little bit color a little bit more color into it making it more neutral and then I can also play around with the color if I want using that as a starting point this gets to be really an aesthetic thing based from person to person for me I tend to like to go cool with things and then add um, saturation, but you can see it's going yellow again because of what I did, and so you can just back off on um, on that, and then get a pretty decent color. And so that's pretty much what the auto levels and color does. And so now I'm going to use some other examples of of how to use the box and what happens when it doesn't look exactly right. Um, in this particular case, I um, may want to do other things to the picture. Uh, to to bring it out. It, really, I think it's just m more about going a little more neutral with it and bringing it out. And so what you end up with is, and you can see the issue is, is that it went a little blue in here, even though it's good here. So what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and undo 
the blanket area and then I have a picture that looks much better than the original. Um, so let me get to some more examples. So here's an example of a picture that is a little bit harder to work with. When I press the auto levels uh, and color, you can see that it, um, it, it adds some nice contrast to it. You can certainly see uh, the difference in the image, but it's also a little green here and a little red there. And that's because the color, you know, um, is split. It's, it was taken under water and it has color issues. You'll also see this sort of thing happen with pictures of plants, for example, something, anything with a large hue base, um, uh, like a close-up of a plant, for example, when you auto balance it, it uh, will make the parts of the plant look great, but it'll it'll make the shadows look blue. And there's a few ways to deal with that. Uh, well, first let me let me go ahead and click the buttons that I that I like here, um, that make make the picture look the best. Um, I'll just go ahead and click. Um, it's a it's definitely a subjective thing, so I'm going to go ahead and just click this one um, because I, I like the contrast. But it's still a little green in here, and it's still a little red in here. So what I'd like to do is to get rid of this red and to make the um, ocean a little more blue. The masking in Sage Light was really made for this exact sort of thing. So here's what I can do. I can click on the reds and just go ahead and change the tone of the reds to whatever tone... Uh, so I can click red here, and then um, and then I can just go ahead and change that to to whatever I like. I'll go ahead and do that. I'll feather the mask a little bit, and then I'll press um, apply, and then I'll close the mask window. So that's gotten rid of the reds. It's kept the reds in areas where they're still red. It's just gotten rid of the reds where there there's too much. Now what I can do is I can click on the ocean part, the water, and then I can uh, change the hue. I can change the hue to anything I want now. Um, right, I could uh, do something interesting, or I could just go ahead and change it to uh, just a little bit to the to the blue that I'm looking for, and then I can um, again dismiss the mask window, and now I can um, go ahead and look at. The, well, actually, another thing that I could have done too after when I clicked on it. Here, let me go back. This is how easy it is to change things in uh, Sage Light. I can just go back and redo what I did. Um, and do it over again. And so not only did I change the color uh, of the water, but I also want to change the brightness. I want to bring I want to bring the brightness down a little bit. And what you'll see is it's getting a little edgy in here, and that's where I can go ahead and, and increase the feather on the mask to uh, compensate for that. What you what you'll see is you'll see how edgy it gets and then you just change the feather a little bit. And then um, maybe add a little bit more blue to the water, that sort of thing. Um, Again, it's just really what, what you want to do with your picture. Um, it's just experimenting, uh, really. And so if I press Apply and then close the window, now I have a, a definite before and after picture. Maybe add a little bit more color. And so what I can do is I can uh, look at it with a border just to see what it might look like. And there you have a, really a picture that looks quite different and a lot more colorful. And so that's the basic tour of the auto levels and how it can help you. And in, in pictures where you don't really get the result you're looking for, you know, you can use uh, a lot of the other functions in Sage Light to to get what you want.